Hi, everyone. This is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of the Grand Rounds in Urology. Joining me is one of our section editors for Next Generation Microbiome, Dr. Curtis Nickel, who uh, is going to share with us some new information on recurrent urinary tract infections in women uh, beyond what we normally do. So, Curtis, thanks a lot for uh, taking the time today to uh, share this with our audience. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be able to present this topic in Grand Rounds Eurology, the infection section. And what we're going to look at today is how we can use a new paradigm to manage recurrent urinary tract infections, both preventing and treat them beyond antibiotics. This may not be a new paradigm. It's been around long before we had antibiotics. We're going to present this as a best evidence case uh, case-based guideline approach. I do have some relevant uh, disclosures for this uh, uh, discussion. Now, it turns out that when we discovered that bacteria were the cause of inflammation, we sort of lost our fear of God and acquired a fear of microbes. And that's particularly the case in uh, the present era of COVID-19. We thought we had everything beat in the 1930s and 40s, when we discovered antimicrobial agents for urinary tract infection. New antibiotics, new classes of antibiotics were discovered very quickly over the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And that became the antibiotic golden days, the antibiotic era up to about 2005. And with better antibiotics, we had these great predictions. Campbell's urology in 1956, urinary tract infections will soon be relegated to the wastebasket of medical history. Well, the Surgeon General of the United States in 1967, quoted in Lancet, said, the time has come to close the book on infectious diseases. We have basically wiped out infection in the United States. Now we know that that's not true. In fact, we now appear to be entering a post-antibiotic era with bacterial resistance drying up the pharma pipeline with resistance such as ESBL, MRSA, VRSA, CRE, MDX, XDR, and even more. This represents a considerable problem. Now, you know, the bladder was always considered sterile. That has been dogma. Tell next generation sequencing has shown us that the bladder is in fact a veritable microbial jungle. Our problem is we don't know who the good guys are, we don't know who the bad actors are, and what happens when we try and wipe out the uropathogenic bacteria causing infection, we are also killing off the population of good bacteria in our microbiome that may be protecting us. Go straight to a, a new paradigm might work. Sexually active young women, no operations, no medications, so they're simple, uncomplicated cystitis. These women are usually treated with multiple courses of antibiotics and positive cultures, usually with different bacteria. Women such as this who are highly motivated look for recommendations on how to prevent these UTIs that basically we prescribe antibiotic prophylaxis to decrease the risk of future UTIs in these women. And we like to select uh, antibiotics that have the lowest risk. We may also offer patient initiated self treatment with acute episodes in motivated women. However, this patient, as well as many others, believe that repeated courses of antibiotics lead to GI dysfunction, vaginal yeast infections, intolerance, and many patients generally feel unwell on antibiotics. She, as well as many patients, wants to explore other strategies to prevent recurrent UTIs. So what do we recommend? We recommend changes in hygiene practices, and post coital avoiding, avoidance of hot tubs, tampon use, douching, and all these other things that we recommend to our patients. The guidelines say the case control studies demonstrate that these suggestions do not significantly impact recurrent UTI risk. Actually, these approaches can reinforce the shame and self blame common in recurrent urinary tract infections. But there is one evidence based behavioral modification approach that works and that's increased water intake, particularly for women who consume less than one and a half liters per day. They can reduce UTI recurrence by approximately 50%. What about cranberry extract? 
This has been around for 300 years. My grandmother used to offer this. So it must have some basis. The AUA guidelines state that clinicians may offer cranberry prophylaxis for recurrent UTIs. Uh, well, the EAU guidelines mention contradictory results with difficulty to make recommendations. We now know why that is. It's because the active ingredient is PAX. To get enough PAX to reduce UTIs, we'd have to drink two or more liters of cranberry juice a day. Now that's a lot of sugar. So we have to look at cranberry extract and many of the cranberry extracts do not contain the amount of PAX required over 30 milligrams required to make a difference. So this is what we have to look for. What about other non-antibiotic strategies to prevent UTIs? The guidelines state that supplements such as d manuals vitamin C, and other vitamin cocktails, probiotics, really lack sufficient data to allow recommendations to patients. Yet, I recommend them to patients to at least try based on the evidence that is there. In fact, the EAU guideline says that prophylaxis with probiotics such as lactobacilli show differences in effectiveness between the different preparations. We now know that only certain probiotics and certain lactobacilli species work to prevent recurrent UTIs. And that's what we um, propose to our patients. d -manos has been shown, and this is from the European guidelines, is that it's significantly superior to placebo and as effective as 50 milligrams of nitrofurantoin in preventing recurrent UTI in women with E. coli bacteria. They don't believe the evidence is sufficient for recommendation across the board. However, I do believe that it's extremely helpful in some patients with no downsides with recurrent E. coli bacteria. Methanamine hypurate or hyprex has been around a long time. The guidelines show that multiple old retrospective studies have described efficacy in reducing UTI episodes with few adverse effects. And it's worth considering this older non-antibiotic medication. Postmenopausal women present other options and difficulties, and such as this woman who's had recurrent UTI since menopause. She didn't have a lot prior to menopause, and she is successfully treated with antibiotics, but is having the same problems with antibiotics and wants other recommendations to prevent these UTIs. Evidence-based approach is vaginal estrogen therapy. In peri- and postmenopausal women, clinicians should recommend vaginal estrogen therapy to reduce the risk of future UTIs. That's an EAU guidelines concur with the AUA guidelines. Has very few side effects and effects has not been shown to increase cancer recurrence in women, including breast cancer. Now it's vaginal estrogen, not oral estrogen. And there does not appear to be major differences in the actual estrogen product used to deliver vaginal estrogen to the area. Now in postmenopausal women, there's not a lot of studies done in this age group. However, I recommend based on the evidence we see across the board, uh, specific probiotics, d manos and cranberry based on what evidence is available. The guidelines, as we already mentioned, are equivocal in how effective these are, but in some patients, they are very effective. Now the future for recurrent urinary tract infection, I believe is immunoprophylaxis or vaccines. There's uh, two that are available, none in North America at the present time, but that's going to change very soon. The evidence right now on, uh, as far as guidelines are concerned, vaccines for urinary pathogens may represent a future direction for prevention strategies. Well, the EAU guidelines recommend a specific product that's available in Europe, but not in North America. I have become involved and very bullish in this particular novel sublingual vaccine, Euromune. And I believe it's gonna be a viable option with, and will, I believe will soon be available, approved by Health Canada, perhaps in early 2022, based on the evidence that we're collecting in our clinical trials. We did uh, identification of all the trials. There's 14 clinical studies using Euromune, of which five were met our criteria for a UTI free outcome in women, two retrospective and three prospective studies. In the two large studies comparing this vaccine uh, to antibiotics, 
the patients on the vaccine had a 35 to 90% UTI free rate, rate. These were women that on average were having five to eight UTIs per year prior to the vaccine. Well, on antibiotic prophylaxis over the same course time period, only zero to 6% became UTI free. Clearly a uh, superior clinical benefit. In the observational prospective studies from UTI free rates range from 33 to 90% up to two years. Now the overall safety of this vaccine in 1400 women in these studies, only two were discontinued because of adverse events. And in fact, in post-marketing experience on special access programs that are available in the UK, six countries in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, only eight adverse reactions were reported over 20,000 patients that represented over 1.5 million doses of the vaccine. So I believe that vaccines are truly going to be a game changer in the way we manage recurrent UTIs, particularly in women, but eventually in complicated UTI and perhaps even in children. What's going on right now is that we do have a first in North America, Canadian investigator initiated uh, study, which I am the principal investigator. I hope to present the preliminary results at the AUA in uh, September. Uh, we also have just completed a study in which I uh, was uh, privileged to be part of in the design of the study, the analysis, the interpretation, and the presentation of the results is the European pivotal uh, phase three randomized controlled trial of using this vaccine against placebo. Uh, we have 12 month follow-up in 240 women treated with the vaccine or placebo. We have completed the uh, preliminary analysis and it is exciting and groundbreaking. And we hope that we'll be able to present this at the AUA in September. The paradigm for recurrent UTI management will change drastically in 2021. Uh, what we have available now to prevent UTIs, even prophylactic antibiotics don't always work and patients develop an acute episode of UTI. The guidelines state we should use the first line therapy, nitrofurantoin, trimethamin sulfamethoxazole, phosphomycin for the treatment of symptomatic UTIs. We should base it on the local antibiogram and with the duration should be as short as possible. However, many of our patients, including cases one and two that we described here, are tired of antibiotics and the effects of antibiotics. The guidelines state that UTI is typically self-limited. And in fact, before we had antibiotics 80, 90 years ago, acute episodes of cystitis would respond over time naturally. And the natural history shows they rarely progress to more severe disease, even without treatment. The incidence of pyelonephritis and sepsis is low and is not substantially different in patients receiving antibiotics versus only supportive care. And multiple randomized placebo-controlled trials demonstrate little benefit to antibiotics for UTI beyond modestly faster symptomatic uh, improvement. In fact, there's been five randomized placebo-controlled trials uh, looking at antibiotics versus placebo. And as is suspected, antibiotics are superior in terms of clinical success, the uh, time to success and cure and bacterial eradication compared to placebo. But after a week or so, there's not much difference and there's very little difference in urosepsis or pyelonephritis, but antibiotics were associated with a higher risk of side effects. The message is that many patients with UTI respond to placebo. How can we help the patients while they're uh, waiting for mother nature to affect a cure? We can start them on phenazopyridine or pyridium, the sort of the urologist friend for over a century. There have been studies showing that NSAIDs are almost as good as antibiotics for symptomatic control. They just take longer for the bacteria to be eradicated and for the UTI to be cured. Urine alkalization, either using more expensive sodium citrate uh, products or sodium bicarbonate, baking soda uh, in water will help symptoms in many patients while they're waiting for the bacteria to clear naturally. I tend to use Hiprex or methanamine hypurate, even though the guidelines state that it does not have a lot of utility in 
acute UTI treatment. Let's go beyond guidelines because many patients will ask us, what is there available in herbal therapies? And for that, we need to go beyond our urologic evidence and look at the evidence uh, from the homeopathy literature. And from that, there are three herbal therapies that we recommend in our clinic, golden seal root, uva ursa, and echnitia. Many patients, particularly in the last several years, are looking at dietary approaches to health. And they want to know if there's anything they can be eating or changing their diet to help their recurrent UTIs. And certainly there is evidence to show that many foods have natural antibiotic uh, properties and there are anecdotal internet reports of uh, patients who have found that changing diet changes their propensity for recurrent UTIs or even treating acute UTIs. So the question I wanna end is, can we manage simple urinary tract infections in women like we do the common flu, supportive care, vaccines, but no antibiotics? And the answer is possibly yes. So I'm gonna leave with some presentation pearls because I don't want you to uh, go away and say that you're not gonna prescribe antibiotics for women who want it for UTI. Antibiotics remain our primary intervention for urinary tract infection, but antibiotic stewardship must be our priority. Females with simple cystitis survive before antibiotics and do well on placebo and supportive care. There are evidence-based strategies for preventing recurrent UTI in females without resorting to prophylactic antibiotics. And there appears to be strategies to manage acute recurrent UTIs in females without antibiotics. But the, the fact is that most women with symptomatic UTIs that cannot be prevented with alternative therapies will demand episodic uh, antibiotic prescriptions. Uh, you can use self-start or low-dose prophylaxis management, remembering antibiotic stewardship is key. So thank you very much. And I hope that uh, over the next several years, you'll start to see this new paradigm for treating simple, uncomplicated UTIs, particularly if uh, we go with the vaccination paradigm, become the standard of treatment for preventing and even treating these infections. Thank you very much. Curtis, that was absolutely amazing. I, I can't believe that direction we're going right now with this. Uh, you know, just a, a couple of quick questions. Um, how long do you think it's going to take to start seeing this uh, being integrated into practice in the U.S.? You mentioned that some of these things, uh, vaccines sort of approved um, in other countries. And what's, what's the process here and how long is it going to take? Well, some of the uh, interventions are already available and patient pressure um, and advocacy is leading the way in terms of uh, the use of uh, cranberry, D-mannos, probiotics, and physicians just have to be on board and use the best evidence and guidelines on how to use that. As far as the vaccines are, are concerned, um, I am very sure that they are going to be a paradigm shifter in how we manage these. Uh, vaccines Absolutely. are a little more difficult to go through the approval process than most pharmaceuticals, except perhaps over the last year for a particular uh, COVID-19 vaccine where it's getting fast-tracked. That being said, vaccines now are being accepted for the treatment and prevention of um, microorganism disease. And they're becoming more accepted by patients, becoming more accepted by physicians and regulatory authorities. The Health Canada has uh, looked at this file and realizes that antibiotics are one of the main drivers for antibiotic usage in North America and one of the main drivers for antibiotic resistance development. And they're fast tracking this particular vaccine through the process based on the evidence from previous uncontrolled trials, the Canadian mm -hmm. early experience trials that we're running in my institution right now, and the pivotal RCT that has just been completed, uh, the multi-center European trial. 
the United States, we hope to, uh, once it's available in Canada, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pressure from the hundreds of people thousands crossing the border to get it. <laughs> yes. You know, it, you know, this is uh, this is really uh, uh, interesting, but you know, it's not so foreign. We have you know vaccines for pneumonia and pneumovax and for zoster and various other things out there. And uh, uh, you know, it's it, it's uh, interesting that it's uh, translating now into the urinary tract, and uh, you know, it's a game changer. I, I really want to thank you for your time and what you've shared, and we look forward to hearing this at the plenary session of the AUA and and other places, New England Journal of Medicine. I'm sure it's gonna be there. So thanks a lot for your time, Curtis. Okay, David, thank you for the opportunity to present this uh, presentation.